Uh, thank you very much, Jürgen. Um, and thank you all for coming out uh, at this time. Uh, it's very early. For me, I have these two contradicting feelings inside me, with one being uh, a little bit tired and the other one having a slightly increased heart rate because I'm so excited to, to share in front of you all today. Um, but obviously, it's not about my increased heart rate. Um, I want to talk about this. So in the next 17 minutes, I will try to convince you that sound and silence are far more important in your life than you currently assume, and that we should really try our best to make them work for us. Because what we cannot do is turning off our hearing. When we grew up, my sister and me um, became pretty sound conscious at an early age because we have a father who loves to audio record things. And we still have a lot of um, mini discs, those little discs uh, lying around at home, uh, containing recordings of random conversations we had when being on vacation, or cowbells in the Alps, or the sound of the shore at the Mediterranean Sea, or the sound of the shore at the Atlantic. I was also very early educated to protect my hearing, um, and I don't quite remember what I built here, but I think it clearly shows my passion for occupational health um, um, and safety measures. So what is so fascinating to me about sound is the fact that everyone has emotions and feelings attached to it, and they are subtle, but they can be either triggered by you or others to recall memories and emotions that you had in the past, as well as consciously creating moments for the future. So for example, when experiencing a situation and certain emotions um, and you connect that with a special song, you can listen to that special song later on and really dive into um, those feelings again. So just a few years after this picture was taken and a lot of massive coincidences later, I was given the great opportunity to join a young and small uh, company called Mimi Hearing Technologies in 2016. And our company offers mobile hearing test technologies and sound personalization algorithms, um, which bring back the details in your listening experience. So you can get a variety of products equipped with our technology. And what you then do is you take a hearing test and everything is personalized to your individual hearing profile when applying it. By now, we're around 70 people in Berlin working on new ways to test your hearing, especially in the environment that we are living in right now and the challenges that we have, and then providing uh, better hearing for smartphones, TVs, uh, hearables, and so on. So on March 2nd, 2016, so right after I joined Mimi, I was asked to write a blog post um, for Mimi's website about uh, World Hearing Day. And just to be clear, I did not choose that visual for my uh, blog post. But in fact, this is the World Health Organization's official poster for World Hearing Day. Um, so I did write the requested blog post, and you can say that it truly was not a masterpiece. And also, not many people read it. Um, but what I stumbled up on uh, while doing my very brief um, phase of research uh, was a publication called The Burden of Disease by Environmental Noise. And I bookmarked the publication. And eventually, I also started to read it, mostly because of the um, colorful 
cover. And before reading it, I rather had the good effects of sound in mind, like the cowbells or the sound of the shore at the Mediterranean Sea. But I realized that those are quite luxurious environments to be in, um, and that sound and noise can have a serious impact on our well-being. So let me give you a very, very brief introduction um, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sound. So this is a sound wave, and there are two things that I would like to introduce to you. One is frequency, the other one is decibel. So frequency describes how high-pitched or low-pitched we perceive a certain sound. And frequency is usually measured in hertz, and hertz describes how many times you can go essentially up and down in one second. So that would be one hertz, and if you double that, then you would have two hertz, um, so a higher sound than before. Um, still not audible for the healthy human ear, because the healthy human ear, a very healthy human ear, can hear between 200 and 20,000 hertz. And what I would like to do now is I would like to do a quick hearing assessment in this room. Um, you will hear a sound, and it would be great if you could all raise your hands um, whenever you hear that sound and you take down your hands when you don't hear that sound anymore. Understood? Any questions about that? Okay. So we start now. I don't know if it's still going on. Um, <laughs> So thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who took down their hands earlier than the average, or even for the people who kept their hands up even though they were not hearing anything anymore, maybe due to some, some, some peer pressure, make sure to get your hearing checked in a more accurate manner sooner than later. In the first step, you can use our mobile hearing test for that, but you can also go and see an audiologist. It doesn't really matter uh, <coughs> what you do. It really matters that you do something, and you should do it sooner rather than later. So this was frequency, and now um, I will talk about uh, decibel. And the easiest way to describe decibel and how loud we perceive things um, is to uh, lead with a few examples and make you guess how loud things are in numbers. So this image symbolizes the sound of snowflakes falling on the ground. Does anyone know how loud uh, those snowflakes are when hitting the ground? That's very unfortunate. So that would be fairly quiet, as we all know, but in numbers, around 10 decibel. Let's continue with the subway. Any idea how loud a subway can be uh, when, when entering the station or departing a station? Yeah? 50 to 60? 50 to 60, and you said 90? 80? I said uh, 85, and obviously all those numbers are kind of a uh, range, you can never determine it's exactly uh, that loud whenever you, whenever you uh, listen to it, but those are rough uh, estimates. So 85 decibel means that you will have trouble um, having a conversation, or it's annoying when you're trying to listen to music, but it also means that longer exposure to it can lead to a certain degree of hearing loss. Um, could I see some hands? How many of you own noise cancellation headphones? Okay, that's around 30%. And how many of you use those noise cancellation headphones when commuting? Okay, thank you. I'll get back to that um, in a second. Maybe a few more examples. The ticking of a watch. Around 30 decibel, still fairly quiet. And two more examples. Uh, a Formula One race when standing right next to the race car, as shown here in Malaysia. Any idea? Uh, 120? Yes, and, and, and it can even go up. Um, so 140 wow. decibel, that means that without extremely good hearing protection, this is truly destroying. So, and maybe a last and more relatable example uh, would be a rock concert. 100, yes. Depends, <laughs> also depends who's playing, yes. Uh, so I put a range, uh, sorry. 
um, on depending who is playing. So between uh, 95 and 120 decibel. So definitely too loud as well to not wear hearing protection. And um, when if you're interested to uh, measure noise levels in your environment as well, you can easily do that with your smartphone. Uh, there are many, many apps for that. And the Apple Watch even has it as an integrated feature now and also explaining the numbers and what is harmful and what is not harmful. And everyone who does not have an Apple Watch, um, I brought some numbers as well. So 85 decibel does not mean that you will suffer immediately uh, from hearing loss when being exposed to it. But it means that starting at 85 decibel, your hearing will suffer eventually. And the louder it gets, the shorter is the amount of time that you're allowed to expose your ears to it before damaging them. 80 decibel still causes stress and other health issues, but it's not directly problematic for your hearing. And then with 75 and below, um, your ears will thank you for that, even though um, side effects might still occur um, for, your, for your mental well-being. So equipped with this knowledge, uh, sometimes in fall 2016, we thought about World Hearing Day and how really no one cared in that year, and that we should do something more impactful for 2017. And as a side product uh, of our business, we have quite some hearing test data um, from people around the world. In numbers, that would be 1.5 million from 150 countries. So what we did is we created a global hearing index, taking 50 different cities, the hearing ability of those inhabitants, and average noise levels in those cities. We prepared the index and then sent out a press release to the internet, specifically targeting uh, the cities mentioned in the index. And the response was overwhelming. We had 450 media outlets covering the story of uh, noise pollution and hearing loss. And the reason why it's so relevant is because noise pollution can have serious and serious impact on our health and well-being. It leads to cardiovascular diseases, sleep disturbance, tinnitus, um, and more importantly to, to cognitive impairment in children and also um, to, 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 to um, <laughs> simple annoyance by the people who are exposed to it. Just as an example, in New York, noise is the single greatest quality of life complaint that people have. 18,000 people are calling the Department for Environmental Protection each year to complain. And you just have to imagine how annoyed you would need to be in order to Google that number, pick up your phone, wait in the waiting line, and then actually complain. And all of that is not even yet related to hearing loss. Age-related and noise-induced hearing loss, they usually come slowly creeping in. And some people think that when you suffer from, from mild hearing loss, everything just gets a little bit quieter. But that is not accurate at all. Most annoyingly, you will have difficulties understanding your partner in a noisy environment. Here today with the carpet, um, it's fairly quiet, so having a conversation is still, is still quite comfortable. But you get worse in doing that when you're suffering from hearing loss, and that is simply exhausting because your brain needs to do more of the work because your ears can't anymore. And even though you can really feel that exhaustion, because the topic is so stigmatized, it still takes people seven years from the time that they realize that they have a certain degree of hearing loss to the time that they actually get help in form of a hearing aid or similar. And when someone suffers from undetected hearing loss, the socioeconomic consequences are really significant as well. So you statistically have a lower income. We see higher rates of un unemployment, social isolation, dementia, and so on. And most of that would be preventable. So the first step to get there is to really educate people, raise awareness, and make people really think about it. Luckily, there is another side to sound as well, uh, which can bring positive effects into our lives. 
very, very good example is classical music, which has shown positive impacts on our mental health, on our ability to fall asleep, um, and even to, to, lower, to lower blood pressure. So sound can really help us to ease the brain in certain situations. So how many of you listen to podcasts or music or audio content of any kind when trying to fall asleep? OK, that's uh, around 20 to 30 percent. Um, when I was rehearsing, I was actually wondering how many people do that, because my next sentence is, I do that too. Um, <laughs> and for me, it's not so much about the content. I probably spend more time selecting the right show than actually listening to it. For me, it's more about hearing the, a familiar voice, essentially. And I wanted to find out what leads me to do that. So there's this thing called internal overstimulation or running of thoughts, meaning when you're trying to fall asleep and you close your eyes, and it's usually also silent around you, um, your brain has nothing to process there anymore. And therefore, all the thoughts that are in your black backlog um, that you kind of stuff to the back um, come slowly up and your brain starts processing them again. And by choosing some audio content to listen to, you stimulate your brain with your soothing sounds and it just gets a little bit more um, easy to fall asleep. So one article compares this phenomenon of the music or the sound played uh, before going to sleep um, to a nicotine patch. So I think that opens a completely different discussion about our um, mental well-being, which unfortunately would blow the scope um, of this talk. The commercial side of the world has also picked up on the effects of sound. Um, the most prominent example is loud music in bars and restaurants. In the US, um, even more than, than in Europe. And what, you, what kind of effect you have here is that um, your companion can understand less what you're saying and therefore everyone talks less and therefore everyone consumes more food, uh, but especially beverages. So that's a very uh, obvious example. The more, a little bit more subtle is the fact that the supermarket chain Rewe runs their own radio station with the <laughs> very special slogan, we create special moments because every purchase begins with a special moment. And, <laughs> and so they are trying to, 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 to lure the customers in and get them to have a good experience um, by exposing them to, to, to curated content, uh, which makes a lot of sense because generally speaking, the right music at the right volume makes us more creative which also uh, leads to a higher tendency to buy things. But also by choosing the speed of the music played in the store, you can actually influence how much time a customer spends in your establishment. Um, by playing French music, you can get people to buy more French wine. <laughs> and as the last example, uh, consumer electronics. So um, with the success of hardware such as uh, Bose, Jabra, Sony, touching this realm between health and lifestyle um, by providing products which offer great amounts of uh, noise cancelling or sound personalization. And on the other hand, um, health and well-being apps for meditation or soundscapes or mindfulness, we really see the need of people um, for products which help them to manage their individual relationship to sound and the noise um, and the noise around them. So coming back to World Hearing Day, uh, we're in this year, uh, we sort of made World Hearing Day our uh, individual Christmas and we thought, okay, what could we do this year and how can we get people to reflect more on their exposure and their own behavior in regards to sound. So again, we measured noise levels in uh, famous places in several German cities. And at night, we went out and we um, made really huge stencils and took chalk spray and sprayed those noise levels um, at those um, different places. 
And even though the, this stunt was initially not uh, planned to build on the support of the inhabitants, um, we, got <laughs> we got emails from, from all over Germany sharing their noise levels or asking <laughs> if they could have some stencils uh, to, <laughs> to spray paint themselves. Um, and overall, the willingness of people from all over the world to share their individual relationship um, to sound has been a great side effect of my work in the past four years. Sometimes those stories are really heartwarming, especially when it comes to people having a connection to, to a certain sound um, and actually their ability to hear it. And sometimes those stories are also um, really, really sad. Putting sound and the impact that it has on us and the positive side effects more into our everyday life um, does not take much effort, but really um, pays back big time. So for me, there are two key elements. One is be aware. It doesn't really matter if you're listening to a great masterpiece uh, or if you're standing right next to a, to a construction site. Your, your ears and your body will usually tell you what is good for them and what they should get more of and what is not good for them and what you should try to avoid. And the second one is act where you can. Um, there are a lot of things which are simply out of our scope, but there are a lot of things which we could do. And luckily, hearing protection is more and more trending and by now almost invisible. So I have these customized earplugs and the fun part about those is that they don't make the sound very muffled when you're at a concert, for example, um, like, the, like the very basic earplugs. But I describe the, the effect as some sort of super hearing because you're able to hear way more nuances and you're also able to understand the conversation way better when you're uh, with a friend and you also want to exchange some, some thoughts during the, during the concert. So here's my closing remark and maybe something you can take home and tr try out yourself. When we go somewhere and experience something, the usual thing we do in order to, to, to capture the moment is we take out our phones and we take a picture. Last year, I went to Italy um, and we stayed in a very cozy house and this is the terrific view during daytime. At night, there was a thunderstorm um, and because it was dark outside, um, taking a picture was not really an option. So I took out my phone and I opened my voice memo app and I recorded the sound of um, the rain drumming on the roof or the thunder or uh, the, the, the wind in the trees. And whenever I listen to that recording, I'm right back in that moment. And it's sort of my supporting tool to, to revisit that moment and all the emotions going on in that situation later on. Technology makes it incredibly easy to do so. Um, and you can do it too. Um, maybe today, maybe during your next vacation. Let's find out. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> <laughs>